Ciao friends and welcome to a new SQL BI video. In this video, I want to explain you the difference between strict evaluation and eager evaluation in the computation of conditional statements in DAX, which is a very complex way of saying that I want to explain you how DAX computes an if statement. When you write if condition and then you provide the then branch and the else branch, how is DAX computing that expression? Intuitively, one might think that uh, it computes uh, the condition and then either one branch or the other, depending on the value of the condition. But this is not always the case. DAX has two ways of computing the if function and in general, any conditional statement, strict evaluation and eager evaluation. Strict evaluation is the most intuitive one and it proves not to be always the best option. Eager evaluation need to be, required, need to be asked for uh, by using variables or by using the new if eager function and sometimes is uh, the best option. But before choosing between the two, we need to understand better the difference between strict evaluation and eager evaluation. And to do that, we need to look at some DAX code together we reason on top of it and then we run some tests in order to understand how DAX computes that if statement. Let's get started. In order to understand the topic, the first thing that we need to do is look at code and try to guess how DAX is going to compute the expression that we provide. And then we use DAX Studio in order to check whether uh, our reasoning is uh, correct or not. Now, this is a video about an article. In the article, we use different code because there we wanted to give you the option of downloading the PBIX file. Here in the video, I use a different example, which is much larger than the one used in the article. And I use that example because uh, we have more data and numbers are easier to recognize when they are larger. So let's start diving into the code. This code is uh, rather simple. Uh, it's not important at all to, uh, the, to understand what I compute or to focus on uh, details, because uh, at the end, we are only interested in this part of the code. Anyway, let's uh, review it together. We have uh, two measures, M1 and M2. M1 computes the sum of a column. M2 computes, again, the sum of another column. And then I have average age, which computes the average of age. The three columns are coming from a fact table, quite large fact table, like around 4 billion rows. Then the query computes uh, the average over the entire fact table. And then for each value of uh, the individual's age range column, it checks if uh, the average age being a measure is computed for the given age range is greater than the average over all that I previous, previously saved in this variable, then it computes M1, otherwise it computes M2. So we have an if condition, then an if statement, then a condition, and then M1 and M2, the then branch and the else branch. Now, the question is, how is the engine going to compute that if statement? There are two ways of computing it. One that is the most intuitive one. The engine computes the condition, and then depending on the value of the condition, it either computes M1 or it computes M2. That's the natural way you would expect DAX to behave. But there is another way, which is, uh, the engine computes the condition M1 and M2. So it computes all the values. And then it decides only at the end which value to keep and which value to throw away. That doesn't seem really smart because it computes a value that needs to be thrown away later. Despite not looking very smart, it is actually a good technique depending on some characteristics of the query. The first exam, the first uh, pattern we described, so computer condition and then only one of the two branches is known as strict evaluation. The other uh, evaluation that computes always everything and then decides at the end what to throw away is known as eager evaluation. 
Let's uh, look at uh, the code again and let's investigate on what it does. By default, DAX uses strict evaluation. So it computes uh, the condition and then either M1 or M2. What is the problem of strict evaluation in this specific scenario? When we look at code, we typically focus only on the portion of the code that we write in measures or in simple expressions, like this if statement. And if you only focus on one expression, strict evaluation is the best option because it only computes part of the expression, only the part that is required. But we need to remember that this if statement is inside an add columns that iterates for different age ranges. So in our mind, we typically think about this evaluation as the engine iterates row by row on each value of age range, and then it computes the if statement for every row. But this is not what the engine really does. <coughs> the engine needs to scan a minimum number of times the fact table, retrieve values, and then produce results. The expensive part of a query might be the scanning of the fact table or the next operation that computes further values. Depending on which of the two operations is the slower, one evaluation might be better than the other. In this specific case, because the engine needs to group by age range and uh, compute the average age, M1 and M2, it can decide to compute M1 and M2 for all the values of age range and then decide at the end to do the calculation. We need to understand which of the two paths it will take. To do that, we enable the server timings and we look at the XMSQL queries which are executed by this query. So, let me run it, should be quite fast. Then we need a bit more real estate and we look at the server timings. Here we are. The query executed in 2.2 seconds. Remember, we are working with a table with 4 billion rows, so 2 seconds to scan it is totally fine. And these are the individual queries executed. Let's uh, look at them together. We don't need all this space for DAX because we are only interested in the last few lines. We have a first query that computes the age range and the sum of audience and the count from the audience table with a join over individuals. So this is computing sum of audience, then count, which are the two values needed to compute the average age group by age range. And this is needed to obtain this part of the query. It is grouping by age range and it is computing the average range average age. So this XMSQL query is feeding the value of average age here. Then we have a second XMSQL query that computes the sum of age, the count from audience. There are no grouping by where audience is not null. This is computing this part of the code, the average age over the entire table. Then we have a third query, a tiny one that only computes the age ranges and is needed to compute the values of individual age range. And finally, we have the calculation of M1 and M2. Look at in details at uh, these queries because uh, the first one computes uh, the age groups by age range, computes the sum of individual key, which is uh, the one needed for M1. So it's uh, computing this part of the query from audience, the fact table with a join over individuals. And then we have a where condition. M1 is computed only for these two groups of age ranges. So the engine first gathered the age ranges. Then it evaluated the condition that was fed by this first query detected that these are the only two age ranges for which M1 is required, and then it computed it. I would expect the next query to be the same, a similar structure, but with different values for the age range, and uh, it's computing the sum of audience time key, which is used in M2. 
So this last query is computing M2 for the remaining age ranges, only the ones for which the condition is false. So what happened in this query? The engine first gathered the values needed to compute the condition. Then it evaluated the condition and it split the set of age ranges into two buckets, the one for which the condition is true, the one for which the condition is false. Finally, it sent two different queries, one for all the values in the true bucket and one for all the values in the false bucket. Therefore, M1 or M2 are computed only when the condition is actually met. So the true condition computes M1, the false condition computes M2. This is strict evaluation. The engine computes only what is needed. But we need to dive a bit more to understand whether this is efficient or not. Because this query specifically is using only storage engine. So the price of the query depends on the number of scans that it needs to perform over the fact table. And we have one, two, three, four expensive scans. Specifically, it is important to note that the, the, this scan and this scan, they are basically identical, the only difference being the where condition and the columns that are used. But still, the engine needs to scan an entire table containing 4 billion rows. Yes, the condition helps in some way, but it does not reduce by a lot the amount of uh, time that is needed to scan the fact table. This is where strict, uh, sorry, eager evaluation becomes interesting because the engine might decide to use a completely different path and say, if my goal is to reduce the number of scans of the fact table, what I can do is scan the fact table, group it by age range and compute both M1 and M2 in a single scan. Once I have all those values, Depending on the value of the condition, I choose M1 or M2 and I throw away the remaining part. In which case this might be effective? Well, whenever scanning in one step the fact table or in general computing both measures at the same time is actually faster than doing two scans of the table in order to compute the two buckets that I computed earlier. In order to force eager evaluation, we have two ways. Either we use variables or we use the new if eager function. Let's see them both. The first way we can force eager evaluation is to use if eager. If eager is the very same as if, but it forces eager evaluation. So instead of using if, I use if eager. And then we run the same query again. Remember, here we have five queries. 2.2 seconds is the time required. Let's see what happens with if eager. So with eager evaluation running. We have only three scans and the query is actually faster. 1.4 seconds instead of 2.2 seconds. It's not twice as fast, but it is much faster. Let's look at the queries. The first one computes the age range, the sum of age that is needed to compute the uh, test, the condition, then the sum of time key that is needed to compute M1, and the sum of individual key that is needed to compute M2. You see that in a single scan that lasts for 874 milliseconds, it computed all the values. Then we have a second scan that computes the sum of eight audience and count from audience where audience is not null. This is needed to compute this average. And the third scan is just the gathering of the age ranges. So the path follow now is totally different. It computed in a single scan the, all the values needed to compute the result and only at the end it will decide which one to use. We could have a better evidence of this if we look at the, the logical query plan, but it is actually not needed because the physical query plan is already giving us enough information to understand what is happening. And in this specific case, 
eager evaluation proves to be better than strict evaluation. Beware that this is not always the case. The engine typically decides whether to use a strict evaluation or uh, eager evaluation depending on internal reasoning. But with if eager, you have the option of forcing eager evaluation, which is not always the best option. But it might be if you know uh, what you are doing and if you know that in your specific measure, eager evaluation is actually better. Besides, you can also force eager evaluation by using variables. We need a bit more space here because uh, you can use if, the regular if, but you can simply store m1 in a variable. Let's call it m1. Then we store in m2 another var the value of m2, and then we use variables instead of using measures. The code is the same, the result is the same, but now it is a bit more evident what we are asking. We are telling to the engine, I don't mind what the, this condition will be. I want you to compute M1 and M2. And then, depending on the condition, you return M1 or M2. This is another way of obtaining eager evaluation. We can quickly check it by running the query. And we obtain an error, of course, because I miss an R. Return. Okay, you see that the pattern using variables is the very same as the pattern using if eager. So, I know I'm repeating myself, it's not that eager evaluation is better than strict evaluation. There are two different ways of computing the same expression. And you need to choose the one that best fits your specific needs, depending on the code that you are writing. So, what we have seen is a clear example where eager evaluation proves to be better. This is not always true. Most of the times, using strict evaluation is a bit better. Because in this specific case, the measure to compute was rather simple, just a simple sum that can be computed through a scan. If that was a much more complex measure, then you can imagine that computing two very complex measures for all the possible combinations proves to be more expensive than making the choice in advance. So for very simple calculation that requires scanning the fact table, then using eager evaluation might be a better option. In general, strict evaluation is still a good option. And another important detail is that in order to show you the difference, I had to use a very large model. Because uh, with simple code, the difference between strict and eager evaluation is really tiny. There are examples where changing from strict evaluation to eager evaluation also on small data sets proves to be uh, proves to have a very strong difference but uh, they are quite long to describe so i would stop the video here and in another video we will see further example of the difference between strict and eager evaluation enjoy dax mm -hmm.